We belong to Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. He purchased us, hallelujah, with His own blood. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. And everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay, amen. Thank you, Tim. As always, great job. Suzanne, Tammy, Peter, appreciate you helping us, leading, leading us in worship. Amen. And praise the Lord. And Eric and Mike back there doing all the stuff that they do. Praise the Lord. I'd get more specific, but I can't. Praise the Lord. Am I on or not? Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. And I want to welcome uh, everyone uh, joining us from live stream. Appreciate you uh, being part of the service with us today. Amen. God knows no distance, so amen. You're just as much a part of this service as anyone, and we appreciate that. Darlene and Don, especially good friends and part of the church for so many years. We appreciate them as well. Amen. So life is good. Amen. And if you notice, I didn't shake hands or hug anybody today. It's not because I'm being standoffish. It's because I have symptoms. Praise the Lord. I don't have it. I just got symptoms, praise the Lord, and you don't want the symptoms, praise God, yes, so I'm, I'm refusing to receive this thing, amen, and we all know how that goes, you know, you just stand in faith and amen. keep on confessing the Lord and praise the Lord, but I don't want to give it to somebody who may not be in that place, praise God, because it wouldn't be fun, hallelujah. God is good, amen? Amen. Praise God. Did you know... Uh, Sally does a lot of baking, but I found out through the years that bakers trade their uh, bread recipes uh, on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> Speaking of bakeries, one burnt down. The whole business is toast. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Move, move away from the bakery. What did the boy pig say to his girlfriend? Don't go bake in my heart. <laughs> These are horrible. These are really bad, and that's why I enjoy it. Praise God. He was getting ready to go on a road trip. Hey, Pete, you know how come uh, fungi always in are invited on road trips? How okay. come? They don't take up mushroom. <laughs> fungi. Okay, well, enjoy the trip. Praise the Lord. Okay, God bless you all again. Appreciate you being here. And let's go right to the Word of God this morning. I want to start with Acts chapter 26, verses 15 through 18. And I'm going to have several scriptures here to get us started this morning, but um, amen. It's, it's important that we uh, try to bring all this into some kind of context as we move through this. So in Acts chapter uh, 26, begin at verse 15, he said, I said, who art thou, Lord? And this is uh, Paul after his... Damascus Road experience, and he's sharing this now. And he said, he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 through 10. Romans 8, 6 through 10. Praise God. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Thank you, Lord. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. Hebrews 12, verses 22 through 24.
Praise the Lord. We're living in a time, and I'll get to this in just a second, but we're living in a time where, uh, you know, we think words don't have that much meaning, but they do, and we're hearing stuff all the time that the enemy is trying to get into us to get us to believe. It's no different than a sickness. Uh, a vi we got this corona thing going on now. I, I appreciate Mike so much because, uh, see, I'm not going to be affected by it at all because I don't drink Mexican beer, so it's cool. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm just <laughs> okay. Never mind. I'm saying, but that's out, it's it's trying to get us sucked into this and to so, to be in fear because fear attracts this junk. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it does. Now I know we've got viruses. And I'm dealing with a thing, and well, multiple people here are probably likewise. But it's what we focus our attention on that's going to hold us. It's, that's the thing that's going to dominate the way we live our lives. And so we've got to understand that we are spirit beings first, before it and above everything else. Now, that doesn't mean, he said in this world you'll have tribulation. Well, some of it's the junk. I mean, the, the physical stuff that we go through health-wise, you know, whether it's a cold, whether it's some virus or whatever it might be. But we don't have to let that dominate us. So it doesn't have to be the thing that controls us and manipulates us. Now, we can have it, but we're going to go through it. If we get it, we're going to move, we're going to move right through and come out on the other side because we're not going to let the symptoms dictate to us our reality. Amen? Because if you do, every thought you have is going to hold you captive. It's going to be the thing that is going to drive you uh, into fear. And wherever there's fear, you're not going to have any faith to operate the way you should. Amen? And so we need to... Re reassess our realities, I guess, is a way of saying it, and make our focus the spirit. Amen? To, to live in this last day, that's what we're going to have to do, because it's going to get, uh, you know, in the natural, it's going to get worse. Yes. But not for us. Exactly. Amen? I, said, I was confessing this all week. No plague comes nigh my dwelling. Exactly. In fact, I was talking to my youngest daughter, the same thing. She'd heard some stuff about the... Uh, uh, the coronavirus and all this stuff. I said, you know, the first thing you need to do. Yes, we need to be, we need to use common sense. Right? I mean, if there's things available, you should take them. Right? But don't, that's, those are just symptoms. That's not what we have or what we're dealing with. What we have to understand is we're spirit beings. So we have to operate by the spirit to get the results that the spirit has for us. So if we get too focused on the sickness or the, the next virus or whatever the thing is. Now, I'm not saying we're immune. I'm saying it cannot take us out. And we, in time, we can overcome it to where it won't have the effect on us that it's having on other people. Exactly. Amen. But we got to believe and we have to stand in faith in order for that to take place. Now, how many of you know, like, we're born again. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. But naturally, we still do natural stuff that is not, that's contrary, actually, to our true identity. Right? All right. Why, then what, how do we combat that? We stand in the faith of what God's Word has said about us, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Well, listen, it's the same way with healing. Exactly. By His stripes, we were healed. It's a done deal. We're not waiting for God to come heal us. He's waiting for us to receive the healing, for us to take it by faith. Yes. Amen? So if that means, just like sometimes I'm a little sporadic in my righteousness, my righteousness, not His, amen, it can happen the same way with physical attacks on your health. You stand in the truth, amen, in spite of what the symptoms are telling you. The symptoms of my behavior sometimes are not very righteous. But God has declared me righteous, and that's the only thing I can go by. I have to stay in faith with that, amen, in order to progress. Same way with everything else, whether it's finances, whether it's health issues, or whatever it might be. He's already healed us, right? He's already prospered us. Amen. He's already raised us up and seated with Him in heavenly places. And that's the perspective that we have to operate from. And to do that, we have to renew our minds. We have to discipline ourselves, especially when the attack comes. Because when you feel like, crap, it's hard to focus on Jesus. You know, I mean, let's face it. We know that's true. But that's what we have to do. We do the things that we can do naturally, but we stand in the promises of God. We stand on His Word, amen. That's the rock, amen, that can't, we can't be moved, amen. So, that's just a side here, but I'm trying to get into the stream here of where we're going. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, that would be us, praise the Lord, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just, one more here quickly. Ephesians uh, chapter 4 Oh, no, let's, let's start with, uh, yeah, Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. So he said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. They're letting natural, everything natural dictate their reality. So he said, don't be like that anymore. You, you were Gentiles, and, and you walked in that. But he said, don't do that anymore. Testify to the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. All right, then look at Ephesians 4.29, which is just an extension of this thought. And he goes on to say in Ephesians 4.29 that to, not to let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Why would corrupt communication come out of your mouth? Because if you're walking as other Gentiles in the vanity of your mind, amen, you're going to be saying the stuff that you're feeling and experiencing, and that'll be your confession. Of, oh, how, how do you feel? Oh, my God, it's killing me. My back, this, you know, whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? And he's saying, don't, don't walk like that. Exactly. And then he goes on to tell us how we express that. It's by corrupt communication proceeding out of your mouth. In other words, saying what you're seeing or feeling instead of what the Word of God says. Exactly. That's corrupt communication. It's dead talk. Yes. Corruption, right? So that which is good to the use of edifying. To build yourself up in the most holy faith as well as the people that you're interacting with. So that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So it's not just about my feelings or my symptoms. It's how I express what I'm going through to other people. Yes. Right? So, with that in mind, we need to s stop saying what we're seeing. Right. Exactly. Amen? Because it's a lie. Most of it is a lie. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not against the news or watching news or anything else. I don't watch much of it. Maybe it's because I'm a little weaker that way. But I pick it up and it, and it bothers me. I mean, when I'm hearing nothing but Corona, 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 and I'm thinking, what? Come on. Yes. Let's, how about we're talk, we start talking about the Lord that healeth thee, amen? Yes. And uh, instead of trying to get people into fear yes. and torment, yes. let's set them free to what God wants to do in their lives, amen? It's, you know, I mean, it's America. I know where we've gone from, and, you know, schools, no prayer, and then wondering why we had the kind of acting out that we see in schools. I know there was a, a special going on about that here recently. Kids just flipping out and, you know, going berserk in school. I'm telling you, it never happened when I was in school because they just slapped you every way but loose. I remember in high school, I had a, I, I'll never forget this. The football coach was our math, was it math? Or, yeah, the math teacher. And uh, I played football. I was on the team, small school. Everybody's on the team if you go out. You, you know, there's only enough people to create a team. So anyway, I'm sitting there. I'm absent-mindedly. I'm not paying attention to him, the class, or anything else, which was not real unusual. But I'm sitting there, and I'm clicking this pen. Click, click, click. I'm not thinking. I'm not hearing it. But it's annoying the crap out of him. He's getting angrier and angrier, and I'm not paying any attention. And I kept doing it until finally he came over, and he hit me on the back of the head. Amen. And I turned around to, to you know, like, going to respond to it. And then I realized this is the teacher's probably not a good idea. And my, the pen was down. And I, like, one more time. I mean, I mean, it just set. I wasn't trying to be obstinate, but I had it down. I mean, it, I, I can't hold my thumb on it for the next 45 minutes, you know, in this class. So click, and he just went ballistic. I mean, it was like he had a freak out right there on the spot. And I'm just saying, that's the way it used to be. You know, I mean... I'm not saying we want abusive teachers and all that kind of stuff, but I'm saying when you lose control, exactly. when there's no threat of, you know, right. behavior exactly. modification, if you don't get, yeah. then pretty soon you've got chaos. Yeah. And, and that's what's happening, not just in our schools, it's happening everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Why? Because we've taken God 
Amen. Out of everything. And so what do we end up with? Confusion. You end up with chaos. You end up with strife. You end up with all of the things that we're dealing with in this world. So we, somebody has got to start operating from a different perspective. Amen. And so that's what I'm talking about. We're not supposed to be saying everything we see. And so sometimes, it, for me, I just don't see it. Then I don't have to worry about saying it. Because we're motivated by what's in us. You know, the more you have of certain things, the more that's going to come out of you. Praise the Lord. So, let low correct communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Only say what's edifying. This is the only thing I know for sure that is edifying. Other things, I can say things that may encourage you or help you or whatever, but this will edify. This will build you up. It will help you. Amen. So don't let corrupt communication, but that which is good to the use of edifying, so that it will minister grace to the hearers. Praise the Lord. So what's the problem with religious focus? And I've been thinking about this week simply because of all this other stuff that's going on, plus the junk I'm de I was dealing with myself. And I looked to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, Peter. 2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 18. And then we'll just... Try to get going from there. Praise the Lord. So not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. <laughs> Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Not us, it's not what we're doing, it's our focus on him that changes us, amen, into that same image. It's the, it's the spirit doing it, amen. So religion chooses to only look through a veil. Amen. And that's true of the natural world as well. It's carnal. It's fleshly. Amen. It's corrupt. Yes. Praise the Lord. To limit, if you're looking through the veil, you're limiting your understanding to traditions and preconceived notions. Not understanding, amen, that God wants mercy instead of sacrifice. He wants relationship and not religion. Amen. And religion sets the mind on the flesh instead of the spirit. Now, you would think that would be the last thing it would do, but that's exactly what it does. Religion. I'm not talking about relationship. I'm not talking about the spirit of God. I'm talking about religion itself. It makes us focus on the flesh. Stop doing that. Quit doing that. Get rid of that. Don't have one of those. It all becomes carnal. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so what's the harm in living in the flesh? What, what's the consequences of fleshly thinking? Mm, yeah. Paul said a mind that is set on the flesh is death. Mm. So you listen to the news more than you listen to the Word of God. Yes. You focus more on the corona than on the coronated one. Yes. Our king, amen, the leader, the Lord, amen. And what are the consequences? Instead of faith, we have fear. Praise the Lord. Perfect love casts out fear. Yes, it does. So I'm not just talking about, you know, death. When we talk about, Paul said this is death. I'm not just talking about eternal life. But in the context of Paul's writing in Romans 8, it also includes no energy from the Spirit, which means fatigue. Yes. No vision from the Spirit. So you're frustrated. No ability to please God. So failure. Yeah. That's the result of thinking fleshly, carnal thoughts. That's the result of living fleshly, thinking that way. Amen? See, unbelievers, they've got limited choices. They live in the flesh because they don't have any other focus. There's no other way to live but in the flesh. Because spiritually, they're cut off. Right? They live separate from real life. Now, they would say the opposite. They'd say, you're just... Not rational. You know, you're not thinking. No, you're the one that's disconnected from reality. The reality is God is. Yes. Amen. And you're disconnected from that. So you're living in unreality. You're not living in reality. You're living 
It's insane. Yes. Amen. So according to first, let's look at this quickly. First, according to first Corinthians two fourteen, <clears throat> natural people are restricted to natural life and the limitations that are built into that. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they're foolishness to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Exactly. Well, what's the point in us having the Spirit if we're going to live like the people without the Spirit? Exactly. Because if you're not living by this, you're getting the results that they're getting. You're going to get the same thing they got. Amen? So, we as believers, we've got a choice. They don't have a choice. They're, they're in the flesh, and they have no other way of operating. We have a choice. Yes. We can see the realm of the Spirit. We have that available to us. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Or your attention. Yes. Right? The things that are important to you. So if we don't set our minds on things that are above, then we experience the deadening effect that Paul talks about, amen, in the flesh of our lives. Yes. Yes. The, the numbing, amen, of the Spirit, of what the Spirit's trying to do, amen. It's choosing death over life. It's choosing natural over supernatural. Yes. Yes. And if you're not in the supernatural, if you're not in the Spirit, you're dead already. Uh -huh. You're separated from God. You're cut off. But if you are a born-again believer and you operate by the Spirit, you're in eternal life. Yes. You're not, you, you, you've done all the dying you're going to do when you were buried with Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. The mind that is set on Spirit is life and peace, the Scripture says. Life and peace. How many of you... I mean, life without peace is not a good thing. I mean, it's, that's what we're seeing exactly. all around us. It's chaos. It's, it's insanity. Yes. And you look at things and you go, why? Who does that? Why would they do something? Why would they even think of that? Exactly. They're dead. They're, they're disconnected. Yes. Amen. Look at Philippians 3, uh, verses 3 through 7. Philippians 3, 3 through 7. Now, this is Paul. And we think of Paul, he, I mean, he's got the spiritual insight. He was actually in heaven in the third heaven, and so on and so forth. But this guy was about as carnal as you could be. He was as fleshly as a human could get before his conversion. He says here, he's talking about this. He said, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Why that? Because he'd already been there and had all of his confidence in the flesh. And he goes on to say, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Amen. All that stuff was negative. Once I came to knowledge of Jesus. Amen. So Paul's talking about having lived in the flesh. And so why does he say, have no confidence in those things? Because when we focus on natural relationships, on outward conformity, on human effort and performance, our own righteousness, we miss the kind of life that Christ offers us in the spirit. And we miss out on his life and peace. Now you've got to manufacture your peace. And that's why people are out here doing the drugs, uh, you know, trying to buy in, you know, the bigger car, the more expensive this or the more expensive that. Why? Because they're empty. They're hurting. They're pain, in pain. And they're trying to figure out a way to satisfy that. And nothing's working. And nothing will work until you get Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the real reason that focusing on the flesh produces nothing but death. Yeah. Exactly. To focus on the spirit is to focus on the opposite of all the distractions, amen, and junk that's going on around us and trying to impact us and trying to affect us. Amen? So look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 15. 
2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15. Again, I think we read some of this earlier. But Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 23. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2, 16 through 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of, uh, in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. He's talking about religious people. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, but the commandments and doctrines of men, after the commandments and doctrines of men. All that stuff he said, that didn't come from God. Right. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility. It looks good from the outside. It looks like somebody, whoo, they must really be spiritual, right? Show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to satisfying of the flesh. There's no honor in it. There's no glory to it. Amen. He said, instead, you're looking at the shadow instead of the reality. Exactly. And every time the Old Testament is, writ, is read, he said, you don't realize that the law has been dealt with. And so you're still looking through a veil as though the law is still in effect. Right. And Jesus had no purpose. Exactly. You're not looking at Jesus. You're looking at the rules. You're looking at the laws. You're looking at fleshly things, which is why we become subject to everything in the flesh. Because our focus is there more than it is in the spirit. Amen. How many of you remember shadow puppets? I don't think you can see that. I used to do a really good whack, duck. Dogs. Woo, woo, woo. Right? Rabbit. Woo, woo. Up, up. Here you come. Yeah. Getting into this, aren't you? Well, how about when you were a kid, and if you were like, we, we didn't get to sleep with the lights on. When it was bedtime, the lights went out. Right. right? Lights out. Get to bed. And if anybody was up running around, you were in for a, probably a spanking. Unless you could blame it on one of your other brothers to say it was them that were up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I remember shadows, and uh, we'd rotate around. We had a big old house, and, and there was, after they uh, finished the upstairs, and there were several bedrooms up there, and, and we'd always want to have a bedroom by ourselves because when we were little, we slept in bunk beds in the basement, four boys, and you can imagine what that was like. Back when they used to have feather pillows, we had feathers that deep on the floor one time. Man, you're talking about a whipping. We just got carried away and just until the next thing we go, oh, my God. He's not going to be happy with this. Yeah. So anyway, eventually they finished the upstairs, and we had, so we'd always try to figure out a way to get a separate bed. So there was one little room that was always used for storage, and it didn't actually have a door on it. It was just a arch thing. And I, I latched onto that immediately because I knew nobody else would want it. It was the smallest room. And so that was fine with me because that gave me privacy, at least compared to what it would have been in a room with one of my brothers. So I put a curtain up there over the door for a doorway. Well, it just so happens that it was on the back side of the house or the side of the house that was in the backyard. And when my older brother or sisters would be out, they'd leave that yard light on. And it would cast shadows into that room. Now, they were five, six years older than me, so I'm like 10. And they're you know, going to the prom or whatever it is they're doing. And man, I would wake in the middle of the night, and I'd see the shadow go across the hall, you know, just freak you out. I mean, I'm a kid, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my God, what is that? What is that? And get up, you know, and pull the curtain back and look around to see if who's up and running, sneaking around, you know. And I can remember having just horror, horrible fears, you know, of these 
Things I couldn't even see him. All I could see was a shadow, you know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Praise the Lord. So this is what the Lord's trying to tell us. Shadows can only give you limited facts and reality. They can point to a reality by giving information about the general shape of the object. But it's dangerous to try to determine all the facts about something just by looking at its shadow. Because my brother would be coming home and he's like six foot tall, but the shadow was about 14 feet high and it would curl up clear over the roof or over the ceiling, you know. So it was telling me there's somebody moving around. But I don't know who that somebody is and that can't be my brother because he's six foot. That thing is 12 foot. This is beastly, you know, it's horrible, it's scary, right? So it's dangerous then to try to determine the reality of something, the facts about something, just by looking at a shadow. So to understand the reality, you've got to see the substance and not the shadow. This is shadow land that we're living in, folks. I'm telling you, this is not reality. This is the shadow land. This is, this is where we're seeing stuff and we're saying, oh my goodness, look at that. And, and the Lord's saying, what, what? Corona? Ma, 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 ma. Corona. No, Sharona. I'm sorry. I know. Sharona. I know. But you know, that's what I'm trying, that's what he's trying to get across to us, that this is not reality. Reality is what this says. That's reality. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. By his stripes we were healed. He became poor that we might become rich. Amen. He restores all of our relationships. Yes. Right? Because he had his severed. Yes. So that ours wouldn't have to be. Yes. Praise the Lord. So it's the same way when we choose to set our minds on the spiritual as opposed to the natural. It works the same way. It just reverses everything. Amen. We've got to understand the relationship of shadows and substance has all to do, amen, with revelation and truth. Because the longer you stay in the shadows, as long as you stay, amen, in the, with the veil yeah. of thinking it's something you've got to do or something that you haven't done or something that needs to be done, you're in the shadows. You're, you're, seeing, you're looking at shadows instead of the reality, yes. instead of the truth. So we go about our, our daily work and lives and get this pain, we get this runny nose and coughs and whatever it might be. That's not reality. I know to, to our physical body, don't you tell it that ain't real, right? I mean, come on, we've all had some issue. But the thing that we have to do is stand in faith. Amen. Even when we have symptoms. Yes. The symptoms are just symptoms. Exactly. Amen. The fact is, he, by his stripes, I'm healed. Now, I might have some symptoms, but I'll tell you what, the symptoms are not going to take me out because I'm already healed. And that's what I'm confessing even though I may have symptoms. Exactly. I'm not going to let the symptoms dictate my reality. Amen. It's uncomfortable. I know. I, I, you know, my nose was literally running like a faucet. I, it just, it, you know, it was ridiculous. I don't remember ever having something like that. It's all different for everybody. This crap that's out there, I mean, it affects one person this way, affects another person that way. It just, you know, you don't know. But I refuse to let that snotty nose dictate my reality. Amen. I'll deal with the nose, right? I mean, I'll deal with whatever the symptom is. But I'm standing in the truth of God's Word that says, by His stripes, bless God, I'm healed. I don't care what it looks like. Exactly. Jesus told the, remember the lepers? He said, go show yourself to the priest. They were lepers. They were lepers. And they were still lepers after he said, go show yourself to the priest. They were healed as they went. They were walking in faith. They still had all the symptoms. They had every reason to say it didn't work, Jesus. And just sit down by the side of the road and wait for the next limb to fall off. But no, they took the word that God had spoken to them and they declared that to be their reality in spite of what their natural feelings were or what they were sensing and experiencing and they started amen down the road the way Jesus told them to go and they were healed yeah. praise the Lord That's, that, this is not fairy tales for crying out loud this is God trying to tell us how this thing works how we have to function in order to bring heaven to earth yes. we're all going to heaven yes. 
Amen. That's not the issue. That's already settled. The question is, can we, will we get heaven here? Will we get the kingdom of God to operate in this earth the way it's supposed to? And the only way that can happen is if we are disciplined enough to not let the shadows dictate our reality. Amen. Don't let it confine us, amen, to a physical fleshly life. He's given us all things to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with a physical life. It's just that it can be as negative as it can be positive. Yeah. And it's not supposed to be. Right. Praise the Lord. So, if we're going to perceive life as it really is, then we've got to see it by embracing Jesus as the substance of every shadow and every revelation. Yes. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying... <laughs> Healing isn't a thing. It's a person. I have healing living in me. I have yes. Jesus yes. who is healing. Who's by his stripes I was healed. He's in me. Yes. Now I, I have to choose. Am I going to live by that? Now see, we do this all the time. Now I've got Jesus in me. And a guy in front of me doesn't use his turn signals and is driving 15 miles below the speed limit. Or he's sitting at the stoplight, and the light's green. And I see his head down. I know what he's doing. He's looking at his phone. Right? Yeah. I usually have something to say. <laughs> they can't hear it, but it makes me feel better for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, dipstick, get down the road. Get your head out of the phone. Get it focused on where you're going. And move. Go. And then afterwards, I'm not a block away, and I'm going, forgive me, Lord. I know it's stupid. Yeah. He didn't hear me. It just made me feel good to get rid of some frustration for a second, you know. That's, but that's the deal. I, I let my natural guy get out every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yes. And that dictates my reality. Sure. We, I can't let that happen when it comes to Things like my health, sure. amen, things like my finances, yeah. because the, everything about you wants to go, hey, I just saw the bank statement. Don't tell me everything's cool, right? right? Amen. Hey, I got the nose running here constantly. Don't tell me I'm healed. See, that's what your mind is trying to say. That's what your mind tries to get you to, to buy into. Look, this is reality. Don't, you can't deny reality. Yeah, I can when I know what's real and what isn't real. But if I let my natural guy dictate to me what's real and what's not real, I'll tell you what, I'll be sitting in a gutter somewhere smoking dope and drinking whiskey, amen, and puking myself to death. Yeah. Now, I know that's gross and all that, but I'm saying if I let the things that come against us dictate my realities, yeah. I'd throw my hands in the air and say, what's the point? People are still dying. People are still getting sick. This is happening. That's happening. I'm not letting that dictate my reality. Exactly. I'm not even letting the guy behind the wheel that's wanting to cuss out the guy in front of me for looking at his phone. I'm not letting that dictate my reality. Exactly. The moment it happens, I clamp down. You know, shut up. You know, like I said before, shut the hell up because that's all you're doing. Yes. You're exposing a part of you that is supposed to have been killed. And what you're doing is resurrecting death. Yes. You're not resurrecting life. You're, resurre you're bringing back the dead. Yes. And it's still dead. Because it's the flesh. Amen. See, it sounds like a little thing. Well, I mean, everybody gets aggravated in traffic. Everybody gets upset. But you don't have to respond no, to it. Right? Everybody gets colds. Everybody gets the flu. Right? I mean, that's what we hear all the time. No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not buying that package. No. I may get some symptoms, but I'm not getting the sickness. I'm not getting the flu. I'm not, right? I've got symptoms. Okay. But I, by his stripes, bless God, I'm healed. The same thing I do, what we had to do for years when we didn't have the finances. We would work two or three different jobs and everything else trying to keep everything going. And I was still, we were still confessing. Exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think is ours. It belongs to us. He's going to take care of all of our needs according to His riches and glory. Was I out there still working at 
cleaning up construction sites and painting houses and doing whatever the other stuff that we did over the year. Yeah, I was, but I was believing. Yeah, I'm doing this for a little bit, but I'm believing that God has met all of my needs and He will, amen, no matter what. Amen. So the same way with our kids when they get to acting crazy like I did. Amen. Instead of just saying, well, praise the Lord, I guess they're going to have to go through something really horrible. No, bless God, not my offspring, not my children. I and my house will be saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the reality. I don't care how crazy they are. They couldn't be any more crazy than I was. Amen. When I was young. God didn't withhold His love, His forgiveness, His mercy from me. He chased me down like the song. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <clears throat> See, Jesus, the Word of God, has to be allowed to interpret all of the shadows. Oh, yes. I don't care what the shadow is. Exactly. The answer is Jesus. The interpretation, the truth is Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm sick. No, nope, I'm healed. I got a symptom, but I'm healed. Well, you're poor. Oh, he maketh rich. Yes. Praise the Lord. I got a symptom. Got a bill due, and I'm not sure when the money's going to be there for it. But I'm rich in Christ. And the way that bill's going to get paid is by me trusting Him, Amen. is by believing Him. Amen. Yes, you know, I, I got this attitude thing. He's my deliverer. Yes. I've been delivered. I'm not waiting for deliverance. I've been delivered. Now, sometimes I don't act like I'm delivered. I have to reset my focus yeah. on the fact that I am delivered. Yes. That's what will change things. It's like the song. Another one of the songs we were singing here this morning. The only way you change is by thinking different. Yes. By getting the focus on the Spirit. Amen. I honestly, God, I believe that as we move into this and more and more put our confidence in this, we're going to see less sickness. Yes. We're going to see less early death. Yeah. We're going to see less poverty. We're going to see less anxiety and stress and fear in the church because that's the way it's got to be. Something has to be different about us to cause those that are in the shadow to say, hey, there's something more real over there than what I'm dealing with. Exactly. That's how we glorify God in this last day. Praise the Lord. Throughout the Old Testament, the shadows all pointed to Jesus. Every single one. We know that. We've gone back through the Scriptures and we read different things. We go, oh, that's talking about Jesus. Now, you wouldn't know it if you're just looking at the shadow. But if you realize that shadow is pointing to something with substance, something that's real, then you start looking for the substance. You start looking for Jesus. And that's what he's telling us we're supposed to do in this world. So I, I'm looking at the you know, financial crisis. What is the truth? That's a shadow. What's the truth? He has provided all that I need according to his riches and glory. That's the truth. That's the substance. But if I let the shadow control me, I'll never get to the substance. And the shadow will tell me, see, this is the truth. It's a lie. Praise the Lord. He says, eyes they have, but they see not. Ears they have, but they hear not. Why? Because they're only looking at shadows and listening to shadows. If they'd look to the substance, their eyes would open. And they would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Praise the Lord. So all the shadows, if you think about it, are useful and important if they get us to Jesus. So, the Old Testament can be as much of a blessing for me as the New Testament. Because I know it's about Jesus. But if you don't know that, if you can't see that, then the Old Testament becomes judgment. Pain. Suffering. Payback. Shadows. That are trying to get us free and into the arms of a loving God. The shadows help us understand some things about spiritual reality. They give us clues to what the substance is really like. Praise the Lord. 
The problem comes when we forget that the shadows are not the substance. Exactly. The symptoms are not, think about it. Mm -hmm. Symptoms are not the cold. Symptoms are not the flu. The They're thing. symptoms. Exactly. If you can deal with the substance of that sickness, Amen. the symptoms will take care of themselves. That's why the focus has to be, I'm not saying we shouldn't do anything to try to, you know, medicate or whatever you have to do. But I'm saying, keep the focus on the fact that by his stripes you were healed. And you'll get out of that thing a lot quicker and be less likely to get into it the next time. Yes. It's not criticism because we all have it. We live in this world of shadows. Yes. But we cannot let the shadows dictate our reality. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus. See, we go through life living with all these people in the shadows, and we forget the shadows are not the substance. Amen. The junk is not the reality. Right. Unless we allow it to be. Exactly. Colossians 2.16. And I've said it before, but to me, this is the discipline that he talks about. This is about the discipleship. This is what he was teaching his disciples all along. They weren't getting it real well until they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then things began to change for them. But this is basically what Jesus was trying to show them. Here comes all these sick people. Did Jesus say, oh, my God, look at how sick you are. Just be healed. He didn't, he didn't turn it into a rally. Exactly. You know, I was watching a thing on TV here the other day. And uh, to tell you the truth, it just bothered me. It bothered me. It was healing service, and I thought, I'm living for the day that people are healed mm -hmm. by the presence of God. Yes. Not by me laying hands on them. Exactly. Not by some jack-leg preacher that comes through that supposedly has a healing ministry. Or not by some, you know, hyped up yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But just we yeah. believe that we, I told Sally the other day, you know, the Bible says, call for the if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, and they'll lay hands on you, and you'll be healed, and if there's any sin, it'll be forgiven you. We, the religion has made that about the big shot in the church. The big shots in the church, they'll pray for you, right? The, the really spiritual people, they'll pray for you. No, the reason is, the reason you call for the elders is because not, not elders in the sense of what we think of elders in a church congregation or something, but the mature ones. Mature. Why? Because they're already healed. They're, they don't need prayer because they're walking in their healing. That's where God's trying to get us to. Amen? And it's difficult. So that when the new people come in who don't have this faith, who don't have that experience, who are still living in the shadow lands, amen, they need somebody to pray for them. Right? Until they can start to walk in healing. That's why we pray those prayers. We're supposed to be walking in health. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean we shouldn't pray for one another, and I'm not condemning. Come on, look, I've already told you. I cut it up, right? I'm saying this is where he's trying to take us to, exactly. to change the way that we think. You don't have to feel guilty if you catch cold or if you have the flu or if you've got a, some other condition. What you have to do is stay focused on Jesus because it's the only way out of that condition. Praise the Lord. And it, and it isn't about getting someone to pray for you, although we want to pray for one another. Amen. But we're trying, by doing that, what we're trying to do is lift people up, encourage them, edify them to the place where they can walk in healing. Yes. Where I don't need Sally to pray for me. I am, by, my, by his stripes, I was healed. Yes. Now, I appreciate it if Sally wants to pray for me. But I'm more interested in getting my mind right with God connected with my spirit so that I can walk in health, Amen. prosperity, or whatever the, the situation might be. Let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Those, listen to what I'm saying, those are all arguments about shadows. Yes. They have nothing to do with reality. We've made the shadow the reality. That's what religion did. They did the same thing that they had been doing for 2,000 years, however long the law was in effect, before Jesus came. 
And then Jesus comes, and what do they do? the religious people do? They reject the, the substance and cling to the shadow. And we laugh at them, but the truth is, religion has done the very same thing. What are we, why we have so many denominations? Because we argue about which day we're going to go to church. Why, why are there so many denominations? Because, the, you know, you, you have a holy day, a holiday. You, you, you celebrate Christmas. Come on, I've been through some of these churches that, look, Christmas is evil. It's sin. It's demonic. I get the influence, you know, from other cultures. And same way with Easter, Easter eggs, and they want to do away with everything. That's ridiculous. That's the flesh. Yes. It's the flesh. Yes. Praise God. And that's what he, Paul is telling us. This is all, these are all arguments about shadows yes. that, aren't, that aren't even real. Yes. You're fussing and carrying on over stuff that doesn't even really exist. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. If we get caught up in them, the focus inevitably shifts from spiritual to the point where we only see the natural. Yeah. What am I wearing? How long is my hair? Uh -huh. Did I shave? Did I use women's deodorant? Yeah. <laughs> it pertaineth to a woman. Come on, I mean, really, seriously. Yeah. And I'm not mocking the, the individual. I'm just saying it's, it's crazy when you really start thinking about it. You can see how ridiculous it is. But how many ha are, are in that place where all they see are shadows? Yeah. And they believe the shadows to be their reality. Yeah. And so the reality is the shadow. Yeah. Because they never get to the substance. Yeah. It's always about me, what have I done? What haven't I done? How have I come short? How, how did I pray enough? Maybe I prayed more. Now I'm really feeling something special here, and you y'all need to be listening to me because, you know, I fasted for four days this week, and I and I prayed for eight hours a day. And good for you. That's good. That's nothing wrong with that. But it doesn't change my position right. with God or with other people. Right. All it does is inflate my own ego. All it does is encourage me to think that I've done, I've accomplished something. When God says, you are nothing without me. With me, you have it all. Without me, you're on your own. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We shift from the spiritual to the natural. We lose sight of the fact that God always operates in the spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Everything that we have is done in the Spirit. Yes. It's accomplished. It's finished. It's, it's done. Amen? So His people are supposed to be spiritual. Yes. Praise God. Anybody that believes that righteousness is only a behavioral pattern has given their life to shadows. Righteousness is who we are. It's what sets us up for the inheritance. It's what makes us his offspring. Mm -hmm. We are the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in Christ. Yes. It's not what we're doing. It's what he has done. Amen. And our confidence in that Amen. that changes everything. Amen? Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, uh, 19 through 22. Ah, I know, you just, it just sounds like semantics. It's not. It's the truth. It's more than just verbiage. It's more than just words. It's the thing that will change us. When we take that truth and we begin to say that instead of the other. Instead of saying, oh man, what a mess. Praise the Lord. God's got it. He's got it under control. Praise the Lord. All is well. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Now just think about this statement. In, in its day, Solomon's temple expressed the majesty, the glory, the reality, the beauty of God in a physical way. And we are the church. That's the connection he's trying to get us to make. We are the church. We are the temple now. Amen. And we are to manifest the glory of God 
for the rest of eternity. Yes. Amen. The real focus of history is not what's going to happen on a hill in Jerusalem someday. It, it may happen, but that's not that's supposed to be the focus. Right. Amen. The focus is what's happening on the hill of Zion that we read about, which is spiritual Jerusalem in the church of the living God. Yes. Not the shadow. We've made the, sh the you know, the... the Ex or the uh, revelation of Jesus, a shadow, we've made it a reality. It's pointing us to Jesus. Uh, otherwise, it would not be called the revelation of Jesus Christ. It would be called the revelation of the end of the world or something else. Right. I'm not arguing whether or not those things will happen. I'm just saying they should not be the focus. The focus is Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The real focus of history, again, is not something that's happening somewhere in the future or over in Israel, but what's happening on Mount Zion, which is spiritual Jerusalem, the church of the living God. Look at Hebrews 12. Again, we'll read this 22 through 24. Hebrews 12, 22 through 24. And this is exactly what the writer of Hebrews is talking about, which I believe it to be Paul. But you are come unto Mount Zion... Under the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem, you could say, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. So like Abraham... We are looking, why, why, like Abraham? Because Abraham was before the law. Right. He was justified because of his faith. He was declared righteous because he believed what God said. That's where we are. That's why we become the, the children of Abraham. And that's why Jesus said, you're not children of Abraham just because of your ethnicity. It's your faith. So every Jew isn't automatically a child of Abraham unless he is a child of faith. Right. Because they get saved the same way we get saved. By the blood of Jesus, right? And so, we're like Abraham in that respect. We're looking for a spiritual city. Not a physical one. A spiritual one. Amen? Hebrews 11, uh, 8 through 10. Why? He's trying to get us to understand. You are spirit. You're spiritual people. Quit focusing. Quit making the focus natural. Make the focus the spiritual. That way you'll get the benefits of the Spirit. Amen. Our inheritance is a spiritual inheritance that manifests in natural ways. But if you don't receive it by the Spirit, you don't get the natural benefit of it either. Right. So by faith, Abram, or Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive an inheritance. So we get called to Jesus, and after that we receive an inheritance. We have an inheritance, but we don't know. Where it's at. We don't know how to get there. We, we're, you know, we're looking around in the natural and God's saying, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. We're going, but we don't know where. Exactly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm, I've lived a number of years, and I can't tell you that I ever really knew exactly where I was going to be 10 years down the road. Yeah. I just kept, like Tim said, yeah. just get up, put your big boy pants on, and get on back to life. Go to work. Do what you got to do. Amen. God's got it. God's got it in control. Yes. Amen. I, I, no, I would have never, ever in my wildest dreams at 25 or even 30 ever imagined that I'd be standing before one or two people, let alone a church, yeah. <laughs> talking about Jesus. Uh -huh. It was the furthest thing from my mind but not God. It was part of a destiny that he had established. Yes. All I had to do was begin to look at the Spirit yeah. and less at this. Yeah. By faith. He, when he was called to go out to a place, he didn't know where he was going. He just knew. God didn't tell him where to go. He said, just go. And I'll give you the desires of your heart. I'll give you the place wherever your foot treads and so forth. This was... This was territory that belonged to the Canaanites. Uh -huh. This territory belongs to the Canaanites. Yeah. It's the shadows. 
how is it we how is it we get control? How is it we end up influencing them instead of them influencing us? By walking in his steps, by following what he says. We take territory. Yes. He says, wherever your foot touches, yes. it belongs to you. Why? Because Satan is under our feet. Yes. If we know it. So he may be over there working. He's still under my feet. Sure he, he may be working in my finances. He's under my feet. Mm -hmm. He might be tr trying to work into my physical health. Mm -hmm. He's under my feet. That's the reality. Yes. That's the spiritual truth. Yes. And that's where we have to be disciplined. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, as in a strange country. He says, you're in the earth, but you're not of the earth. Amen. This isn't our homeland. Exactly. It doesn't make sense to us a lot of times. I mean, we're living in the culture that we grew up in, and yet it seems alien to me. It's, it's weird. It's not, it's not home. Exactly. It's where I'm living. It's where this is living, but it doesn't feel like home. It, it feels weird. It feels disconnected and out of sorts. He sojourned in the land of promise. The promise is this thing is going to be renewed. I can impact it while I'm here. But whether I do or not, it's going to get new. It's going to be all new again. It's going to be a spiritual reality existing in the natural. Like Jesus. That's what he's trying to get to us. I'll get to that in a minute. But that's what he's trying to get across to us. So by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now think about that. Don't these cities have foundations? Not according to God. They're all just temporary. They're just here today and gone tomorrow. Yes. We're looking for a city that has foundations. Yes. A rock foundation. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God himself. Amen? Not man trying to influence it, right? We're people of the Spirit. Yes. And we ought to understand the invisible spiritual world is not only real, but it actually controls the more apparent physical world. Praise the Lord. We've got to stop living in shadows. We have to refuse to be dominated, amen, by the natural. We can't afford to let shadows determine reality for us. That's why at the crux of the whole history of man... The spiritual reality at the center of the universe took on natural, physical form. Jesus. Amen? Flesh and spirit intersect. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Jesus is all here. Yes. But what did Jesus do? He, he connected the spirit with the flesh, but in his case, the spirit always dominated. He knew who he was, why he was here, what his purpose was. Yes. Why? Because he was walking in his reality, in his truth, in his true identity. A man filled with God. Yes. Amen. So he's, he's, look, he's trying to get us to understand this is our reality. Yes. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Why? Because you were with me. Before the foundation of the world. I came from there to here. So that you could come from here to there. And so that we could both operate physically and spiritually by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And we've let religion dumb it all down to just physical stuff. Just carnal fleshly things. And wonder why we struggle with our faith. With belief. Because it focuses on the shadows instead of on the substance. In other words, what I'm saying is, this is a shadow. Mm -hmm. It's a distortion of my true self. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. If we could see and know our true identity, we'd be so quick to get out of this thing, we'd be running like our hair was on fire, trying to get away from this, because we'd realize 
how pitiful it is right. in comparison to our true identity. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Spiritual reality combined with the shadows. So you have to keep your eyes, keep your heart centered on Jesus and His grace. That gives us the best chance of keeping all of our shadows in perspective. There are shadows. They're real. They're, they're out there. But you've got to keep them in perspective. They're not the truth. They're not the substance. The ache is a shadow. Right? The, the virus, that's a shadow. The truth is we're healed. The truth is we're prospered. The truth is we're never going to die. When God's life took on flesh in Jesus, the most obvious and constant opposition came from the counterfeit life that was offered by religion or by man in general. Because everything's a religion of some kind. You go, I'm an atheist. No, you're not. You're worshiping yourself. You're worshiping man. You're worshiping. You, you, got, you still got a God. It's just not the God of the universe. Amen. So Jesus, that's the first thing that he came up against, and that was a constant thing that he was always against. So rather than risk confrontation with God, they chose to stay behind a veil and to rely on somebody else, like Moses, to interpret what God was saying, or choosing blindness, relying on a denomination, on a doctrine, on a particular preacher, and reducing God to a system of theology, trying to capture, capture him, amen, in a limited understanding of a human brain. Yeah. So we dumb him down to something we can relate to, something we can understand, something we can figure out. Romans 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. See, God's not going to allow himself to be captured through theology or defined by a religion or a denomination. He refuses to be contained. He refuses to be controlled or manipulated through our theological boxes. He refuses to fit denominational definitions. You get the more, you can find some tremendous revelation in different denominations, different churches. But the more you look, the more you realize that that revelation was for something more than to perpetuate a religion. It was to open us up, to free us to the truth of God in our own lives. He doesn't give, he just doesn't give simple, rational answers for our intellect. Amen? I mean, occasionally we'll get revelation, we'll see, praise the Lord. But a lot of times it's just walking by faith. Amen? It's just believing what he said, even though I can't explain it, even though I can't rationalize it in my natural mind and make sense of how it works. I want it to be that way. I'd like it to be that way because that's what humans do. We want answers. We want to know. We want, to, we want it settled. If it's settled, it doesn't require faith. And if it doesn't require faith, it doesn't please God. Why? Because he wants us to trust him more than a system, more than our own abilities, more than our understanding. Hallelujah. See, God's intent is to heal us not just answer our questions. To give us sight rather than explain to us why we're blind. Mm. Yeah. Psalms 27, verse 13. 
David said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, what David's saying is, I would have died, except I believed to see the substance of God in this land of shadows. I'd see the reality and the truth of God in the midst of all this fakery. Praise the Lord. Psalms 36, verse 9, last scripture, and we'll wrap up here. Psalms 36 and verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. No shadows, just the light of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus really did come to give sight to the blind. He was not just talking about the physically blind. Spiritual eyesight is a gift that comes by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit. We all have it. It's your inheritance. Believe and see the reality of the Spirit and not the shadows. That's the difference that faith makes. And faith has to be in substance. It can't be in the shadows. It has to be in the substance, which is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. We need to discipline our thinking. We need to think as He is. So are we in this world. We can live by the Spirit. We can walk above sickness and disease. We can be the healing or the shadow. A shadow of the substance touches a person and they're healed because of the confidence of the person casting that shadow in the substance of Jesus himself. That's where God is taking us. That's where I believe God is going to put us in this last day. And the the beauty of this is, see, if it was just young people, and it will be a lot of young people, but the beauty of this is if you've lived to be 60, 70, and on, you've lived in a lot of shadows. You've experienced so many shadows that they try to overwhelm you with their reality. This is the thing that's going to change everything to me. A person my age is going to experience substance. The shadows will flee. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody who has never known anything, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, never known anything, you know, perfectly beyond the shadows. Struggled with them all 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 of our lives. Seen it affect other family members, loved ones, people, Mm -hmm. whatever. And then to know, before we leave this planet, he's coming for a church that is without spot or without wrinkle. In other words, no shadows. It's the substance of the body of Jesus himself. That's why he says you cannot disconnect from the head and think that you're going to have any influence. The focus has to be on him in order for this body to function the way it's supposed to. Focus on the substance. Amen. And that substance will take care of the shadows. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here today. Lord loves you. Sunshine out there today. Watch out for the shadows. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you all.